I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education, and we're here with another one of our Teachers of the Year. We're with Loanne Jackson, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me today. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and, and what you teach. Okay. I teach um, in Center Joint Unified School District in Antelope. I am, this year I'm presently teaching first grade. We've been in school for three days, so um, we're teaching procedures. And um, I, I was in, this is my 27th year teaching. Um, I, was, I just left um, teaching English language development, so I was teaching English to um, kids who are new to our country, that their primary language is a language other than English. So. so you've been teaching for 27 years? This is my 27th year. Oh, well, congratulations. Well, thank you. That's a long time. It is. <laughs> No, when it's gone by fast. I bet it has. <laughs> so in, in, in all that time that you've, that you've been in education, what are some of, the, some of the changes that you've seen over the years? Some of the changes that I've seen over the years um, are, um, number one is the partnership between um, the community, um, between uh, teachers and um, students and their parents. It seems with, and I know it's part of the economy, everyone is so, you know, um, tight with their budgets that it's hard for them to get into the classroom. But um, when I first started teaching, I had parents in my room. Uh, every day I'd have a different parent volunteering in the room. And actually when I was pregnant with my son, my um, first child, um, they, the parents gave me a surprise baby shower in the classroom. So um, I, I think that's changed a lot, the parents um, I know they're, they're um, concerned about their kids' education, but I know um, it would be nice to have them in the classroom, have an incentive where parents could come into the classroom more and not have to worry that they're going to be you know, taken away from their jobs and you know, there won't be any pay for them. Um, and then the other thing is um, the testing. That's, that's really increased since I started. And, but I, I agree, I think we need to test students. We need to test them so that we know where they are and we know how to um, set our goals and our objectives to meet their needs and so um, otherwise it's just your opinion if you don't have the facts to um, back up the reasoning why they're not successful in a certain area um, you need that data in order to drive your curriculum so um, the testing is definitely heavily more impacted now and I um, I think that's really important, and I think it's very um, valid that we do that. Um, sometimes we probably overtest, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, it's important um, to know where they are using some of those facts. But um, and we really pay attention to the numbers now. We, we do. Can use the we do use that to kind of address the specific needs of the child. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so those are, are two areas that I can think of. Off and I'm sure there's more. <laughs> there always are. Well, what are some of the challenges that, challenges that you face uh, um, now, nowadays? Some of the challenges that um, we are faced as educators, um, we have a lot of English language learners um, than when I previous started teaching, um, which is, they're awesome. I mean, we learn so much from each other. Um, they come in and we learn from their culture, we learn their language, well, we learn parts of, you know, um, things that they do in their language, their foods, their customs, their culture. Um, so that's, that's a big, big difference right now. And so our, our teaching strategies, we have to differentiate our, correct, um, our instructions more with realia, with um, uh, hands-on, more hands-on, lots of picture clues, lots of um, graphic organizers um, so that we can meet their needs, so that they understand what's going on and, and um, their reading needs, we have to start. Some kids are in the intermediate grades and they come in with no, you know, English language. So, you know, they, they catch up though. They're, you know, they really do. And so, but it's, it's, a, it's a bigger challenge for teachers. You know, we have to, you know, expand a little bit more in our day and, and use those strategies and pull kids aside for workshop time to meet their needs, so. Are you finding that today's children are, are real visual learners? Um, yeah, they're more visual. Um, yes, there's a lot of hands-on, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I would say auditory, auditory learners. There's, I, I would say more visual than auditory, and so, 
Yeah, I'm a visual learner, so <laughs> I can attest to that. <laughs> so, uh, what do you do to motivate your students? How do you, how do you, when you find a child who who maybe uh, needs a little bit of an extra nudge, what are some of the things you do to try to, to get the kids motivated? Um, well, first I get to their background knowledge and find out what is it that's not motivating them. Is it an emotional need? Is it an academic need? Um, and I, I usually pull them aside and I call the parents and we have a conversation about why, um, if it's an emotional need, why are they acting out? Why are they angry? Why are they upset? So I get to that and then I talk to the child and I let them know I'm there for them. There's hope, you know, don't give up. And um, that we are going to work together as a partnership your parents, myself, and you, you know, it's a three-legged stool and all of us have to do our, our part or the stool's going to collapse. So um, I try to work, you know, with them to get to the bottom of what the issue is first. And then I, I address it from that standpoint. But um, it's, it's real important to let them know that, you know, you're there for them, for their emotional needs as well as their academic needs. Because if emotionally they're not intact, then they, you know, the filter doesn't open, the effective filter isn't there for the learning to take place. And so. what about motivating the parents? Because sometimes you really have to get the parents more involved. Right, right. And I think having them come in and having a, a conference with them, and showing them data, showing them where they are and where they need to be, you know, um, and, you know, just inviting them in for the day to just come and, or just an hour just to sit and to watch your child, be with your child, and um, that helps. And sometimes sending home, I send home um, their writing, and they have to like take a bear, and the bear spends the, the night with them, and they have to, their child has to write about the experience with the help of their parents. And so then they get to see how other children are writing and their experiences as well. So um, they really like those kinds of things. I do have parents come in when, and, and talk about hobbies or when we're doing community services, we have the community come in, um, different workers in the community come in and share about their expertise. Um, so we do get to meet each family throughout the year because a, a student is a student of the week and one, one day of that week that they are the student, the parent is allowed mm -hmm. to come in and, and spend time in reading a book or letting us get to know the family through pictures and members that come into our classroom. So. So what inspired you to become a teacher? Or did you have you know, a special teacher way back yeah. when that, that you... Uh, well, you know, I, I really was going to go into business. <laughs> and I had, um, I had a couple things. Um, I, I loved babysitting when I was 13. I had a job as a babysitter and I was, you know, I, I enjoyed it. It was just an infant and her brother. And, and I love to, and I saw them, I mean, to this day, I still see them now, they have children, but I got to see them grow and develop, and I thought that was so inspiring to see how their brains grow so quickly, just in a matter of weeks, um, when they were babies and beyond. Um, but I also had um, four aunts who were nuns, um, and they would come out, and they would tell us about their teaching experiences in their classrooms, and so they used to, you know, tell me about how they loved their children and my um, biggest inspiration was my um, high school counselor. She called me in and said, "You need to go to college, and you need to, um, you know, you with with this knowledge, you need to make sure that you apply for scholarships and and get into teaching." And and um, my um, I I have scoliosis, so my doctor said I needed to go into something where you can alternate your sitting and standing positions. So I thought, well, I love children. I love to see their brains, you know, develop and grow, and all the learning that takes place from that standpoint. So I thought, well, then I, I need to go into teaching. And um, with my counselor's help, because there were eight children, she helped me apply for scholarships, and that motivated me to say, okay, I can do this. And so I worked several jobs and earned money and got through college. <laughs> well, and here you are now, a and teacher of the year. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, congratulations to you. We really well, appreciate you. your time. And well, congratulations on being named the teacher of the year for the Center Joint Unified School District. We've been speaking with Lo Ann Jackson, mm -hmm. one of our many teachers of the year in Sacramento County. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.